G'day, Harry Houdini here in Australia, and it's a lovely day. In fact, we're having a bit of a heat wave. Yeah, it's something like 90 odd degrees Frankenfurter, you know, in the 30s for us, which is quite warm, but that's lovely. And I'm getting on with the modelling. Now, last time I left you, we were working on these track links, and uh, we had primed and um, basically washed those links. So let's um, continue on there, and I'll show you how I get this kind of snappy metallic effect. Alrighty? This is where we got to last time. Uh, she was undercoated German grey, and then I put that brown panel line wash on, which gives me my kind of fake titanium base. Well, it's the colour that I want. It's kind of a um, a nice metallic undercoat, and it's what I what I like to do. Okay, so the next step is to start putting on these ready brown tones. Now, they are rust colours, but I'm actually using them as almost a pre-mud type thing, and just a dirty weathering look. And, and that works for me, because yeah, the tank tracks are invariably not rusty unless the tank's actually sitting somewhere and no one's actually doing anything with it. You know, no decent tank commander's going to let his bloody tracks rust, because they'll, they'll get all clanky and squeaky and horrible and they'll stick and they'll break and then, you know, he's buggered. Oh, that's not good. And I've had people that, you know, are working in the modern armed forces and they go, we would never let our tracks get rusty. So, you know, it's basically a modelling technique. That, um, that has been used to some effect, the Spanish method, if you like. But um, I'm going to do what I do, and although I'm using rust colours, I'm actually just getting a weather patina to my metal links. Okay, so let's, let's see how it works, and, and I'll show you. So it's got that brown on the German grey. That's terrific. Now, what I want next is I'm going to use a ready rust colour. Okay, now I've already mixed this down or I've thinned it down with water because it's a nice little water based one acrylic and, I, and I've basically got 50% water 50% of my um, my colour because I want this really thin I want this you know to basically I, I don't want big slabs of rust I want this to be very thin and disappear and I'm only using a tiny little brush here because um, it doesn't really matter what I, what I do it's not like it's perfect brush strokes and all I'm going to do is And very randomly give this thing the chicken box. Okay. See? It's exceedingly random and there is no method to it. There's no, no reason or rhyme. I'll just put on as little as much as I want. Now remember I'm going to have another colour of the red to go on here as well. So Okay, so I'll, I'll do that all over. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the rest later, but what I'll do is I'll just do this top section so you can see what's going on. All right, so I've got some red on. That's what I'm going to start with. The ready rust. And now I'll start using the Tamiya um, weathering set, which is really nice. Now, this can be used dry and it can be used wet. You can do a number of things. You can brush it, you can smear it, you can dust it. You can do all kinds of stuff, okay? I don't have to be too accurate here with my uh, cleaning of my brush. It doesn't even matter that there's a little bit of metallic in there. So I can get some of this on my brush, this pigment. And I've used a little bit of water. And again, randomly applying it. Giving it some orange chicken pox now. And no rhyme, no reason, just until I've basically got something like this. Is that showing up on camera? Who knows? Who knows? Okay. So now that it's kind of got its orange and red dots, <laughs> don't worry, don't panic, don't panic. This is like, you've got to have confidence here. It's like when we did the, um, the dot filtering, and this is not a lot different actually. When I did the, um, the dot filtering, you have to have a lot of confidence because you feel like you're buggering everything up, but you're not. Now, we only have to let that dry for a few minutes um, until it's basically the, um, the water's evaporated and the pigments are touched dry. And being acrylics, that's, that's not going to take long. So I'll just go have a quick cuppa and we'll come back and then I'll show you the next stage. 
Well, I've had my cup of tea and this has dried nicely. So, let's see if you can see this. Alright, so it's dried. It's not as obtuse as it was before, but it's still dotty and it's still messy. But fear not. Fear not. This is where we start to um, sort some things out. So, this is where I'll need a wash. Now, I'm going to use black and I'm using my Tamiya panel line, which is basically just a very thin black wash. And this, this is what works for me. So, we've had all the other toys. We'll just concentrate on doing this. So, with my Tamiya wash, I'm going to run down the middle. Really heavily. The middle is where I want it very black. And there's a reason for that. Because that's where the biggest recess is. Right? Especially in these links. Some of the other links might be different. But um, generally I've found it's the middle that I want really black. On the outside. Inside we do completely differently. Okay? So on the inside here, where it's got the guide horns. Okay, see the guide horns? They're popping up there. The other guide horns, they're going to be all worn and metally. So we don't need those to be washed. And in fact, I didn't put any of the um, red or the orange on those guide horns. So instead, here, I just put my dark wash all along that edge. Okay? So that's all I need to do for now. Now I'll go all the way around and I'll finish this off. But basically, on the outside of the guide horns, I'm washing dark in, in the inside. But on the track that touches the ground and that's in the air, the outside of the tracks, I'm washing in the middle. And when we go to the other stages, you'll see why I choose to do it that way and how that results in the effect that I want. Alright, so this needs to dry for about an hour or so, and then we'll come back and do the final makeup. It's makeup time. Yes, this is the, um, the Tamiya pigment um, weathering set, and it's basically just dry pigments, just like your makeup. And it comes with a little, uh, a snappy little applicator here. But I've kind of worn out this end and all the things that I've done. The, the brush part's still good, and we will use that. But what I found you can do is, um, oops, don't bump the iPad, Harry Houdini. Uh, you can get these um, nifty little Q-tips that have got like a pointy end and a paddle end. And they're pretty handy. So what I'm going to do is, using the paddle end, because it's nice and flat, I'm going to get a bit of this silver pigment on here. Okay. Now, I've set this up so hopefully you can see what's going on. So there's the track links, and as you can see the dark wash has gone down the middle but there's still elements of all that splodgy orange and splodgy red and we've still got our sort of fake titanium look. Alright, so what we do now is we gently dry brush. Like that. You see what's happening? Well, this is really so easy. This doesn't require much cleverness or skill at all. Okay. All you're doing is dry brushing on the pigments onto the high, wherever it's high. Okay, so I've, I've set this up so you don't have to see the bottom section of the tracks to try and make it a bit easier to illustrate. And I'll just do a, a bit in the middle here so you are, you're not waiting all day for me to get through this. Because I would pick the one bit of, should have had it shared around the other way, where it's flat. This one's undulating. But you'll see some how some sections are reflecting the light and those aren't. Well, they've all got equal amounts of the um, of the silver on, but this is actually uh, an undulating bit of track. This has got the sag in it. So, okay. So we've got some highlights, right? We've got the wash under there, and we've got all those random colours. Now, we take a little soft brush, and you could just use a paintbrush really. And this time I'll use the gunmetal. Get a whole stack of it on here. It'll only take as much as it wants. And then in that section that I've just done, I'll rub the gunmetal all the way through. All 
Okay, do you notice the difference between this side, where it was all dotty and looked a bit ridiculous, to, oops, bump the iPad again, sorry, I'm working very close quarters here to try and show you this, and I've got a mowing guy out there who's been mowing for half an hour, I've been sitting here for half an hour in this position, waiting to show you this, and here, on this side, you'll see the effects starting to work. So, the raised edges on your track links, and they're different for every kind of track link, but there's always some raised edge, and that edge will hit the ground, that will get worn, that will be the silver bit. Brilliant! By rubbing with a cotton bud, right, Q-tip, or using applicator if you're using the same weathering set that I've got, you could do this with pigments, you could do this with a pencil. You could literally get an HP pencil and rub along there, and you would get a similar effect. You're just trying to get that very silvery, metally look. So there's various ways to do it. It's just however you like to get that metally look, that's what you do. So you rub that all over now. But then the trick is to use something, and that's where this gunmetal comes in really well, is to use something that's not black and that it's not silver, it's between, and it's got a metally finish, and gunmetal is perfect. And that goes in, and it doesn't remove the silver top pieces. It doesn't quite go into the recesses where we've got the black, and it doesn't quite cover the colours that I've got in there. You see there? They're not as obtuse. Over here, we've got dots and things and orange and all the rest of it, and over here, we have it. We've got the makings of some pretty realistic looking tracks. At least I think so. So, I'll keep going with this, and, um, and then I'll show you how we do the inside. I've got all the outside done now, and, and one thing that I didn't show you is when you've put the um, put the gunmetal on, if you feel that the uh, the edge of the track links aren't showing as bright again uh, because you might have rubbed rubbed off the silver bit, you can just gently reapply the silver bit over the top, and you can keep messing around with the gunmetal and silver until you get the balance that you want. So there's plenty of play in it, and the wash underneath shows and the colours we put on show, but everything becomes subtle. Uh, it's a great trick. Okay, now in doing all this I even uh, managed to break the applicator from the end, so that's why I'm using Q-tips now. Anyhow, in here, and tr all tracks are different, there's only one set of guide horns in this. On your panzers you often get two and you, know, you get all kinds of things. Well, there's only one here, they're a bit like Russian tracks, just one set of guide horns. So, same trick again, we'll basically just go through and we want to get those. Now, what we also want to do is there'll be wear and tear on the edges here. So what I want to do is get in as close as I can. Maybe I'll use the paddle side. I want to get that whole guide horn worn. And it doesn't matter that I've got a bit of a silver strip there because it's all going to become... I'll just do a bit. I won't try and do it all. So I want to get those guide horns all silver. That's my aim here, because they will be warm. They're rubbing up against um, the sprockets. Well, they're not rubbing up the sprockets, but they're, um, they're rubbing up against all the road walls. And the sprockets are going in all these little holes, so they will get a bit of wear and tear too. So you need a couple of little silver lines. And that's why here I put that wash everywhere as our basis. So we put quite a bit of silver on there. Now remember, most of this is going to get covered up by the wheels and the sprockets anyway. The thing is, the outside is where you see most of your, um, your, your track link detail. So in here, basically we just need, the sprockets are about the other, uh, sorry, the, the um, guide horns are about the only thing that's really popping up. So again, this is a lot easier, and um, I've only got this broken so that you can See, I broke my track link deliberately so you can see inside. So I hope that's coming up on camera. Um, I might detach from this and bring it up. But here we don't need to do much other than silver those guide horns. And silver the tracks, uh, well the track part where the wheels are going to rub and where cogs will rub and you know, anything like that. Okay. So I'm not sure if that's really showing up on there. Oh, it worked there with the paddle side, didn't it? And this is the sort of thing that's very subjective. You kind of just mess around with it until you get it the way that you want. So let's um, let's detach it from the apparatus here, and I'll stop bumping the bloody iPad. 
and see if that shows at all. If it focus a bit, I think I think you can nearly see the effect. It looks better when you've got the wheels on and it's actually all the running gears put together. Then you start to see how the guide horns will show, and um, it really works. Um, it's better on a bigger scale tank or um, a tank that's got larger size guide horns. These ones are only teeny, but um, oh, there you go. If I turn it sideways, yeah, you see your guide horns have got that silverish, and and all of this. Half of it you're not going to see, and so you're really weathering a whole lot of stuff that you're never going to see. But bits that do show through, they will stand out, and they will really just add that bit of pop to your model. Now, while I'm putting everything back together again, one of the things I look at is what are other worn surfaces that need silvering. And, of course, things like the flanges on the, um, on the sprockets, and, in fact, the sprocket teeth themselves, they're all going to wear and rub and they're going to go silver. So what I would do is, again, I'll get my makeup, and you can do this with a pencil as well, just as easily, and I'll go and rub all of these tips of sprocket. Now these will stick through the holes in the tracks, and they will be seen. So it's well worth doing these, because a the bits that aren't going through track links, well, they'll be stuck out in the air, so it's good to see them. And um, the bits that go through, well, they, they really stick out and look look great when they're poking through your track links. And remember, the part where they're poking through is where I put the really deep, dark wash. So the contrast of the silver to that deep, dark wash means they really pop out. And that just adds a bit of realism. So the other thing I like to do is this edge here, well that's going to get some wear and tear. That's going to rub on things, that's going to rub on that edge of the track. Okay, so I will do that. And while I'm there I might even touch up the bolts. Okay, so it's only subtle, but believe me, they all add to your model. Then the other thing to think of is um, this. which side is this going to go on? I believe this is my right side tracks. So if that's the case, this side will be facing the elements. And this edge it's well worth giving it a little rub over with the silver as well. Okay, and that's exactly what I did here. The edge has got silver on it. Okay, the guide horns in there, they are all got little silver edges. If we can see, it might not come up on camera, don't know, but the sprockets in there, they poke through and you might be able to just see them. They actually are silver. In the light, when if you get it at the right angle in the light, they, they do pop out and they do look great. Um, and then again you can see that the whole metallic silvering effect there and the fact that I've got the, the blush through of the, um, the gun metal and there's only the odd little spot that's got the, um, the rusty orange or the rusty red and that sort of really looks more like a bit of dirt or mud. And it doesn't look like I've got really rusty tracks, it just looks like there's a bit of gunk there and, and it just breaks up the uniformity of one colour. And, and that's what you want. For realism, you want things to look, you know, fairly fairly sort of broken and discoloured and worn and, you know, that's it. And along the bottom here, I even got some of the oranges showing through. I probably even haven't really dusted as hard with the, um, with the, with the um, gun metal on that one, just to give it a bit of a muddy, dirty look. But you can still add more. We can add pigments, things to create mud and do all kinds of tricks. But that's where I've got this one too. And that's how I do my track links. And, you know... That pleases me. I'm happy with that. And if there's anything in there that, that um, helps you, well, great. Uh, you might have your own method. You can share it with me. Uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat, so to speak. Oh, sorry, Basque. <laughs> well, it's taken a while, but I've got that uh, metallic effect happening on my tracks, and I'm pretty happy with that. But um, I've prattled on for so long that um, we're up to about 20 minutes, and that's long enough for this video, and I haven't really got time through the camouflage this time. I started on it, I started videotaping, and then I had a look at how much footage I'd accumulate just showing how my, my track link weathering met it. But um, I'll keep going on the, um, the camouflage, and I'll put that together later in the week, okay? So bear with me, and um, just wait till then, and we will get that camouflage on. I'm not lying, we are gonna do it. <laughs> we have to, otherwise I can't get the bloody thing painted. So that's all we can do for this video, and it's goodbye from Australia, and it's hooroo from Harry Houdini. Mm -hmm.